So there's a myth out there that if you leave a battery sitting on the ground or on concrete, it will discharge. Uh, in other words, you have to put it up on a piece of wood, like I did here, the whole time wondering if I was being duped by some wives' tale, although I guess you'd call it a husband's tale. I decided I'm gonna test it. I've got a brand new battery bank here for my golf cart. These are all eight volt batteries. I'm gonna put three of them either on concrete or on the ground. I'm gonna leave three of them up on the wood. Might even put one up on the bench just to make sure it's nowhere near the ground. And then I have a load tester and a voltage meter and I will check it over the course of the next couple of weeks and see if there is any truth to this whatsoever. I cannot imagine that it's true, but there are many, many people who swear it is. So we're gonna find out. So here's my setup. I've got two controls. Their starting voltage are 8.35 volts here, 8.33 there. That was the lowest voltage one of the bunch. And I've got two sitting directly on the concrete. I've got 8.35 and 8.35. And then I've got one up here on the bench and it is 8.35 and I've got one sitting on the bare ground and it's 8.34 so what I'm gonna do that one sitting on the ground I'm just gonna leave sitting there this one's sitting on the bench I think I'm just gonna leave sitting there these I'm gonna load test I've got a load tester it's basically uh, you hook it to the battery it runs the current through a, a big resistor a big heater and uh, checks to see the voltage drop when you're actually pulling amperage from the battery. One of these and one of these I'll load test so that uh, that's another kind of way to experiment with it. So update on my battery test. These two are sitting on the concrete and it's been just over a month. They started out at 8.35 and then went 8.34 and they're now at 8.33 and both of them have done exactly the same thing. It's actually been 33 days so these two have been sitting on this wood here and they have done essentially the same thing. In fact, this one actually dropped just a touch more, 0 0.01 volt more. And this one has done the same thing, 8353433. And I've got the one up here on the bench and it has done the same thing. And finally, we've got the one outside here. It started at 8.34, stayed at 8.34, and then went to 8.32. So essentially the same thing. So now I'm going to hook a load tester to it. And what a load tester is, is basically a voltmeter and a big resistor. So when you put, put it on a battery, it's going to tell you the voltage. Now this thing's designed for 12 volt batteries. So it's going to tell you, you're in the green, you're good. Well, my batteries are 8 volts, so it's going to start out saying they're bad. But we're still going to be able to see how much it drops when you put it under load. Uh, this is a real handy thing to have. I got this from Harbor Freight. Um, a lot of times testing batteries with just a voltmeter won't give you the answer you want. I'm getting, it looks like about 9.2 volts according to this. So the meter's not, not quite right, but that's okay. You're really, uh, you're really interested in the relative drop when we turn the load on, which is just to, to move this switch. So let's see how much it drops when I hit the switch. And I'm going to try to do a five count. One, two, three, four, five. But I can feel the, the heat coming off the resistor. It went down maybe half a volt. Yeah, this, this meter leaves a little bit to be desired. That's what you get with cheap tools. But. So then we'll turn over to this one, which has been sitting right beside it on the wood. This thing doesn't do very well with these low voltage batteries. It does quite a bit better with the um, with the 12 volts. I've not had this problem before. But let's give it a five count. One, two, three, four, five. And I saw the meter jump down, so that worked. Yep, it's warm. Now we're gonna check the voltage with the uh, real meter. So right after my load test, I'm getting 8.24. 8.26. And interesting, they dropped almost the exact same amount. This one dropped 0.07, and this one dropped 0.06. 33 days is good, but I don't think that's enough to be definitive. Let's let this experiment go a little bit longer. So let me show you what these uh, what this load tester is good for. This battery just recently came off my tractor, and when you put a voltmeter on it, it says 12.02 volts. Not too bad. And when I hook the load tester to it, just over 12 volts. See it. It works pretty good with the 12 volt batteries. 
but when I hit the load, it goes to zero. Uh, so this battery, it, it won't give you any juice. It'll read 12 volts, but it's dead. So I brought you out here to my truck so you can see what it does on a good battery. You can see right now it's giving me, looks like 12 and a half volts or so. And I'm going to hit the load test right here. And it drops down to 10 and a half, and then drops back up. So it's saying that I'm just getting into the weak zone as far as how the battery's performing. All right, we're about ready to put this one to rest. So it's May 15th. And I've got 8.29 volts. This is the outside battery. Here's my two inside batteries that are laying on the concrete. This one I've got 8.3 and 8.3. That's interesting because this is the one I load tested. These are the two batteries that are near the concrete but propped up on wood. I've got 8.28 and this one 8.31 and the last one this has been up on the bench the whole time. 8.3. So let's take a look at some results after 86 days. Control 1 sitting on a board on concrete uh, finished at 0.04 volts difference. Control 2 was load tested, 0.05 volts difference. Control 3 was actually up on the bench and it also had a 0.05 volt difference. So there's our controls. Sample 1 sitting on concrete had a 0.05 volt difference. Sample 2 sitting on concrete and was load tested had a 0.05 volt difference. And sample 3 sitting outside on the dirt also had a 0.05 volt difference. And that means this myth is officially busted. So where did this crazy idea even come from? Like many myths, this one is actually based in truth, historically at least. Lead acid batteries were invented in the late 1850s, and the original batteries were designed with glass cells and wooden cases. Think about it, they didn't have materials to contain battery acid uh, that was readily available other than glass. The problem was the wood would swell if on a damp concrete floor and cause the glass cells to crack. Uh, that would leak battery acid, which of course would ruin the battery and it would also ruin the concrete. Later they tried other types of cases, including rubber. Some of the early rubber cases were fairly porous and again, if they got wet, uh, especially with battery acid, which has a lot of electrolyte in it, it would conduct current and cause the battery to discharge if it could find a path to ground. They also used other types of cases like paper. Uh, again, all of these cases, if they got wet, would cause the battery to discharge. The Edison cell battery was even encased in a steel case, which required it to be insulated between the ground and also between other batteries. While it used to be true that putting batteries on concrete was a problem, with the invention of plastic and its use in battery cases, that is no longer an issue. In fact, I even found a quote from Tom and Ray Maliazzi, the hosts of Car Talk, uh, stating that putting batteries on concrete is a good thing because the concrete acts as a temperature buffer and prevents temperature swings in the battery electrolyte. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think. Don't forget to check out my other channel, Guncraft 101. I've got a lot of new content planned, so check back soon. I've got some great videos coming on both channels. See you soon.